Hi everyone, and oh, welcome to Almost Cancelled. I'm Peter, and I'm joined with Connor. Hey, you from? You said hey everyone there, but for a second there, I wasn't even sure what you said. It just sounded like a noise. I was like, <laughs> hey, I'm in. Hey, I'm in. Was that my fault? I speak weirdly? Yeah, you may have mumbled it. I'm not sure. My bad. Let's talk about Supergirl. This is uh, episode 10 of season 1. Um, it's been two weeks since episode 9 that we got back early. But uh, someone actually mentioned on the uh, YouTube page that it was a it was a college football game. Oh, okay, so it wasn't even Obama. No, nah, no, it wasn't Obama. It wasn't a thanks oh. Obama thing. It was a oh. thanks college Sports. football thing. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so this episode was called Childish Things. And um, full spoilers from here on out, as always, with these reviews. Um, I enjoyed this one. I mean, um, I thought it was, I thought there was some uh, hammy elements, um, but for the most part, I had quite a bit of fun with this because uh, we'll get to the main plot later. But I want to talk about uh, John Jones first and the Martian Manhunter stuff. Yeah, because I actually really enjoyed. Um, I feel like. Him be turning out to be Martian Manhunter is one of the best decisions this show has made. I was I was reading about how they made this decision. Did you see what it was? Yeah, yeah. They cast them and then like they were on set or whatever, and like someone so, said, "Yeah, he'd be a good Martian Manhunter." And Jeff Johns just went, "Yeah, well, why don't you make him that then?" <laughs> <laughs> That's it. But it's working out well because like when it cuts to, when it cut to Supergirl and him like full on just flying together. And he's like full on John Jones, like you know. Like, I saw it. It looks surprisingly good every time I see it like that. Yeah, like, the shots just the straight on shots are like eh, whatever. Where you got like the close up on their face, but where they're actually like just flying around doing the maneuvers, it looks really good. Yeah, it feels pretty cool. I like that he's full on doing that now. Like it's kind of insane that we have a proper live action Martian Manhunter now. Yeah. And yes, yeah, Smallville had a Martian Manhunter, but he wasn't walk like flying around in the green, you know. No, not 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 very often anyway. Um, but not only was he flying around, he shapeshifted in this. He phased through a wall, and he even did something uh, pretty severe, which is also yeah. from the comics. He wiped someone's mind. Do you know what? that that threw me for a second because just before, why didn't he just read the guy's mind to find out the answer to the question? Instead of going straight to... Like, the guy was going, oh, what's Phoenix Protocol? And he, he's like, oh, I'm going to have to wipe his mind now. Why didn't he just read his mind quickly? Have they established on Supergirl that he can do that yet? That's a good point, I'm not sure. I don't think they have established that he can read minds. They might have decided not to have that. But didn't he say he couldn't read Superman's mind? Like, Maybe he did. Maybe he I, did. I, I, thought, I feel like he made a joke about he couldn't read Kryptonian minds, doesn't it? Maybe, Maybe I'm misremembering. It's it's been a while. Maybe he did though. Like just to say he didn't. Yeah. Like maybe he knows what the project is and we'll get more of it next episode when they're actually talking about it. Yeah, that's true. Um so yeah, I I, I don't know. Um but that was pretty good and I like that he's reluctant to use his powers because of that reason. Like he didn't like doing that. It's you know because of there, there was more cool stuff from him. Like the the fact that he was saying like he was as John Jones for like fifty years and mm, he was yeah. hated. Yeah, backstory and lots of stuff from his past. And um, but no, I I just like how the uh, the character has a bit more depth because he knows that in wiping this guy's mind, he's saving his life because he doesn't have to kill him, but he's also erasing the memory of his wife and kids <laughs> and yeah. everything else. Pretty dark. Yeah, it's pretty dark. Yeah. And uh, Alex should feel bad about making him do it. <laughs> yeah, she fucking did. Although I feel like he could have just knocked him out before he transformed back and left. <laughs> yeah, but then then you've still got the question of why the hell did Maxwell Lord just knock me out? True, true. But he had the security footage anyway. They were going to figure out that like Maxwell true. Lord was good unknown point. that it wasn't him. So, mm, good point. Still, no, it was fine. Um, so all the Marshall Heart stuff is pretty cool, and it looks like next week is going to be focused a lot on him and stuff so that's pretty good um before we get to the main plot again i'm, I'm saving the main plot for last uh i want to talk a little bit about the subplot with jimmy and uh lucy probably uh, the weakest part of the episode oh easily the weakest part um in fact 
so Lucy gets offered the job at Catco, and she goes and talks to Jimmy about it. And this scene infuriated me <laughs> because yeah. she is begging to ask what he thinks. And then when he finally says, I think you should take the job, she follows that line with, I don't need your permission. First of all, saying that you think someone should do something is not permission. But secondly, even if he had phrased it in a more dickish way, she spent the last three minutes nagging him to give what he thought. Yeah. There was no way he could win that. I, uh, I mean, I don't, I don't think Lucy's that great a character generally. Like, I've not liked her. Really. No, the, the her best moment was when she led to the the one of the most funniest the funniest things in this episode when she came out of Cat's office and when she's nice and Kara's like, no one has ever said that before. Yeah, like, that was ever. pretty funny. Yeah. yeah, that was good. Um, that's the best use of Lucy yet. Yeah, but that that scene like annoyed me. I was like, what? This makes no sense. She's been so. Like no, that's uh, no. She's been she's been yeah. a cow, quite frankly. She's been a cow. Um, J- Jimmy, I mean, don't get me wrong. Jimmy's reaction to her possibly working there is a bit cold, and I get why she's wanting to dig, but the way she went about it was cowish. Um, yeah. And then yeah, it's resolved later, and it's fine. Whatever. Um, but the main plot, of course, is that Wynn's father, aka Toy Man has broken out of prison. Um, I'm not sure how he got his magic blade yo-yo thing. I don't care, it was cool as fuck. It was cool. Um, admittedly, though, the opening scene when he's breaking out, I was kind of thinking, man, this is really 90s. Yeah, <laughs> like, but... It's really goofy. And I, I like it. He was really... pretty intimidating still, considering he was going around with a yo-yo. Yeah, yeah, they were making him kind of dark. Um, and they, they, I actually thought they handled the... I thought the actor who plays Wynn actually did a fairly decent job throughout most of this episode. Yeah, I'd agree. I thought he pulled up most of it off pretty well. Yeah, when, when he's talking about... Um, you know, it's when him and Kara have that sort of big scene where he, he says, what's to stop it from happening to me? Because she, cause she mm. keeps saying, oh, they just snap one day, it happens, it's fine. And he's like, yeah, but that could happen to me then. Because <laughs> I'm his son. Like, this could be hereditary, you know? Mm. Um and I like that. I thought I thought he did a pretty, quite a good job. Um, and Lawson Barois is really good. So that scene where he awkwardly like tries to kiss her and it kind of like fails and like normally that's the kind of scene in a TV show I kind of dread. Yeah. Because it's just that fabricated like awkwardness of the love triangle and the you know the you know. I think it helps that they actually had like really good chemistry together anyway. They have good chemistry. Um, I always liked her. He's grown on me a lot since the pilot um they're both really good in that scene um and yeah i mean you know i've been rejected before i can relate to the to the the awful reaction you know yeah i can imagine so um (laughs) shut up (laughs) (laughs) but yeah like like i i i I sympathize with him quite a bit in that scene and I, i wasn't pissed at her i don't think she did anything wrong in her reaction like yeah. this is the opposite of Lucy. She was not being a cow. She was being a nice human being the entire time. Yeah, and then she went away and felt awful. And she went away and felt awful about it. Um, again, which makes her relatable because I understand where she's coming from, and it's nice. Yeah. Um, so that's good. I, I, I like that scene actually. Um, it's not a traditional scene that I would like, but I, I thought it was handled, handled better, well. better than usual. Yeah. Um. As for the actual Toy Man plot, I mean, it was fine. Like, um, th- there was some goofy power use in this episode. Um, you know, when the bombs are all about to go off at the, uh, the the toy store or the toy fair or whatever. Um, and she uses her heat vision to turn all the sprinklers on and then uses her freeze breath to freeze all of the water so that the explosion is happening kind of in a big block of ice. A little bit over the top. <laughs> yeah, but I like that they're going out of their way to use more of her powers than just That's true. flying speed and punching stuff. Yeah, uh, earlier on the episode, I mean, she, she did suck in the, the poison gas. That was that was probably Smallville's biggest problem, was the fact that only maybe two or three times a season was it anything other than run in, 
punch or well, not even punch, just push something over and then run back out. Yeah, in Smallville it was basically the Flash because most of the time it was just super speed. Yeah, which is so, something. Like, which is something that a lot of other Superman and Supergirl stuff actually kind of downplays is the fact that yeah, they're really fast when they're flying, but on the ground they're just kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, the poison gas stuff was cool, and then the other one was. When she's in the, the the Jack in the Box trap and it's the like the quicksand. quicksand, I was like, would quicksand really hold her? Is she not strong enough that she could just fly out? No, I can buy that because the whole thing with quicksand, like, it even says the more you struggle, yeah. the, the stronger a pull. So I would argue that maybe because she has a stronger pull, <laughs> but it, surely there's a there's a limit of physics where at a point she is stronger than it. Maybe, but uh, that, that's that's fair, right? And then he even I'll, gives, I'll let it pass. He yes. gives an excuse as to why she can't use a heat vision, right? Also fine, I get that, right? And she thinks there's a kid in the room at that point, so fair enough, she doesn't want it to blow up. But I did sort of question, like, she can reach the edge of the box, she's got super strength still, why can't she just, like, break off the edge of the box and then the quicksand would just pour out? That's a good question. That you know, one didn't cast my mind. Th- that's what came out of my head, and I'm kind of picking on the power uses in this episode, but it's kind of like, they're putting Supergirl in peril, but... Whenever it happens, I'm kind of going, well, but she could do this, or she could do that. Because There's an easier way. Yeah, I know the power set, so I'm like, she can do this, or whatever, and um, it's not a big deal. Like, I'd, Honestly, I'd rather them try and use different things and than, you know... Kry- kryptonite every week. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, that's fair. Um, Plus, have we seen her use a freeze breath before that scene? Because I don't recall seeing it. And if so, that's set up for the ending scene where she uses it for the main event mm. to show us that she does have this. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's certainly not been a big scene where she's used it before, if she has. Yeah, m- maybe she has used it and I'm just not remembering it. Mm. But Actually, you mentioned Smallville, and I'm not a fan of Smallville. Anyone who uh, has heard me speak about it before knows that um, I think Smallville's pretty bad, especially... I, I also agree that it's not good, but I, I kind of love it anyway. Nah, the, the, even, the, even the first sort of half of it, which I kind of got through, and I sort of, this is bad, but I'm kind of enjoying it anyway. I think Supergirl's better. I might make that oh, clear. Even even the, the earlier Smallville stuff, but... I would agree. The last half of Smallville is uh, atrocious and made me hate it with a fiery passion. But mm. the best use of superpowers in Smallville, for me, was always the... Uh, the casual stuff, like I love just seeing him like make toast with his heat vision. <laughs> yeah, just around the farm. Just yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> that that was when I, that was the superpowers I enjoyed. So um uh, Well we've seen Carrie do that a bit as well. Like you know when um, yeah. I think it was maybe last episode of the one before with um Kat's coffee and she's let it go cold. Yeah, yeah. So she just kinda heats it up quickly. One of my one of my favourites in Lois and Clark was he, he they showed him shaving with the heat vision off of a mirror. Yeah. Um Classic. that was fun. Yeah, now I I just I like I like when they use their superpowers in small like everyday ways that just to do things that we would do using just, that just device. Just do it easier. Yeah, yeah. Um, I like that. It's cool. Yeah. Um, but no, that was all good. Um, I, yeah, I mean, I thought I thought the actor playing uh, Toy Man was a little bit hammy. Kind of comes with the nature of playing someone called Toy Man, to be honest. It does, it does. That said, though, the the toys were actually a little bit creepy. Like when, like when Wynn comes into that, yeah. that abandoned, like you know, amusement plus park. I watched Dolls last night or earlier last night. Uh, I don't know, whenever it was, but also creepy little toys. So not a great couple of days for this for me. Mm. Yeah, I'll be watching that tomorrow. So uh, that's coming up in uh, the next Screams After Midnight or horror movie podcast. Uh, <laughs> if you're not watching Free that. Plug. If you're not watching that over on the Mel Fuzz Movies YouTube channel uh, or listening to the audio podcast, then uh, check that out. But um, no, nah, nah, I thought that some of the toy stuff was creepy. Um, wasn't much of it, but it was there. It was cool. I, I, I imagine we'll we'll get him back at some point because they made a point of not killing him. I tell you what, I really like. You know when he when he first breaks out and then he pulls up and puts on the, little, the you know those glasses, mm. the circular toy man glasses. I liked that. Nice little nod to the yeah, yeah. to the comics. Yeah, yeah, yeah uh, that was fine. Um, and of course, the the big sort of cliffhanger at the end is that whilst distract whilst Alex was distracting um, Maxwell Lord, so that you know uh, Martian Manhart could sneak in and you know find you know possibly Bizarro Girl. I think it is. Yeah, I think it's 
I think it's bizarro, especially since Bizarro's in like two episodes time and this is happening. Um while that was happening, Maxwell Lord actually planted a bug on Alex's uh, handbag, um, or purse if you're an American, um, and he knows that Kara's Supergirl now, because we see him watching them eating pizza. Do you know what? I was a little bit distracted at this point, because you they, they both... No, 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 they had pizza, and they both they took a bite, and then they put the pizza down. Do you know what? Who, who does that? Who puts pizza down after one bite? Do you know it's funny, but I noticed that too. <laughs> it, like, it really stuck out as really glaringly weird. Like, pizza in Game of Thrones, that seems like a normal thing to do. You know, I get that. Take a bite of pizza and then just kind of throw it back to the box. What, what are you doing? Eat yeah. the whole damn slice. I'm not a Game of Thrones fan, but I, I do enjoy pizza and watching TV. So... Um, yeah, I have never taken one bite out of a slice of pizza and put it back down. When I pick up a slice of pizza, unless I am distracted and have to get up and do something in some way, <laughs> I'm finishing that slice of pizza. Exactly. Like I, I, I know they went and picked it back up after, but why would you put it down and not just finish your slice? That it just. Yeah, even if you're talking, you just hold it in your hand until. Exactly. It's like food that it, it is its own plate. It holds everything together. You don't need to do anything. You don't need to put it down. It's just, but really, this was probably my biggest problem with the entire episode. Ah oh dear, we need to send some angry letters to the uh, writers of Supergirl. No one puts pizza down after one bite. It's factually inaccurate. So we just like sick Fix Tim it. on him. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Tim Tim's a pizza correspondent. He'll uh, <laughs> he'll go and sort them out. Yeah. Um, all right, we're just we're arguing about pizza etiquette now. Yeah. So that's. Well, uh... I'll just say my only other thing I really kind of felt was a bit weird was um, Marsh Manhunt was phasing through the door. It kind of looked more like a teleport than a mm. phase. It, it kind of just his whole body just kind of was there, and then it was through. There was no step. I think that's just the way the visual effect. I don't think it's. I know, but we yeah. saw him earlier on, like in the first couple of episodes before we knew he was Marsh Manhunter when he went in for the bomb and he phased through. Yeah. Thing. And, and it, so it kind of just struck me as weird when now it was just his, like, it kind of just merged into the other side, like a teleport sort of thing. Maybe it just looks like that when he's moving his whole body. Maybe. It just struck me as weird. Well, because he can go invisible, to be fair. Yeah. That is part of his power set, so maybe it's just he went invisible when he's going through the door for some reason. <laughs> why not? <laughs> I mean, sure. Sure. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Um... Oh yeah, so that's Supergirl this week. It was a pretty, pretty good episode. A um, couple of iffy moments, but nothing. If you've been enjoying the fun that is Supergirl um, and the cheese that comes with that, I, I don't think you'd have much to complain about this episode. So uh, now we'll be back in next week with episode eleven. So 